Hello and welcome in the 12th episode. In today's episode we will implement the rubber button. So in our game, when we're gonna go to the game, there will be additional button here with the rubber. So whenever we, let's say, input the number 5 here, we will be able to press on this number and then press the rubber button and the number will be cleared out. The same as all of the notes. So if we have some notes here and we press the rubber, everything will be just cleared down. Okay, so let's get started. Let's open our project and uh, first of all let's go to the scene folder and open the game scene. I will first of all uh, right click on the canvas and then UI image and I will call this image uh, to be rubber. Okay, and then uh, let's apply the texture onto this, uh, onto this button. Uh, so go to the, our graphics folder, then uh, game screen. And you will see the rubber icon so uh, this is the erase button okay so i will just get uh, grab this texture and drag and drop it in the source image okay and let's uh, move this button a bit down and i will set the size of the button to be 162 by 162 the same as the texture size and then I will just uh, grab the position, the Y position of the pause button. We'll copy it and then put on the on the rubber position and then adjust the X position to be somewhere here. Okay, so we have uh, all of the button on the same height. And I'll move this rubber to be above our game over pop-up and game pa uh, and pause pop-up. So it will not display on the top of those windows. So I will just place it right below the pause button. Make sure you do the same. Okay, we can now go and uh, save this scene. And now we have to create the script to actually uh, attach to this button. So let's quickly go to our scripts folder. And I will just right click, create C sharp script. And I will call it rubber button. Okay, let's open this script. So first of all, let's remove all of these comments. Let's add using statement. So using Unity Engine dot event system. Okay, and then uh, we don't want to inherit from the mono behavior. We want to inherit from the selectable. Okay. To inherit from the selectable, you need to using the Unity UI. So if the Unity engine.ui is not there, the selectable is not recognized. I have just the uh, additional plugin installed in my Visual Studio. So whenever I just try to type it, I have this indication. But uh, just make sure you type this one in. Okay, so we want to inherit from the selectable and we want to inherit from the interface I point click handle. Okay, so if you go to this interface, if you go here and then press F12, you will see that we have um, we have one one method here which we need to actually provide the implementation, which is on point click. So I will just copy this method and go back to my class. So as you see, everything is uh, highlighted to red because uh, we didn't implement this method. So right below the update method, I will just paste this one in remove this uh, column and then put the braces and then uh, in the front I will put public okay and then once you do that everything should be should be normal there should be no more errors okay uh, so this class uh, will not need any of these functions so we don't need uh, any start or update method we just need this one function before we implement this function, let's uh, quickly go to our game events and I will just add another another event. So right at the bottom, we just put the separation separator. I will put public delegate void clear number.
clear number okay and then public static event clear number on clear number on clear number okay and we need to provide the implementation of the function so public static void on on clear number method okay and inside this method we will do if the on clear number is not equal null then we want to call on clear number okay so that's it for this make sure you save everything and now let's go to our rubber button so inside this on point click method we just need to call uh, call the ev event so initialize the event so the game events we're gonna call the game events dot on clear number method and uh, that's it for this class so it's very it's very simple class let's save everything and now we need to actually start using this method so we need to subscribe to this met method we're gonna do that from our grid square so let's go to our grid square class okay and let's find the function um, on enable and on disable so inside the on enable function i will just call the game events dot on clear number plus equal on clear on clear number we don't have this function implemented yet so that way is a red okay let's copy this uh, this thing and go to the on disable paste it and make sure you replace this plus with the minus so we have to just unsubscribe from this event and let's now implement this function so i will just grab this implementation grab this text and below the on disable i will just paste it in okay and let's put this function be public void on clear number and we don't want to pass any argument okay let's just implement this function so inside this function we want to basically check if uh, the certain square is selected so selected um, we need to put a statement if selected and the square has not default value has not default value okay so we don't want to be able to clear the square with the default value because this is the default value which should be there and uh, we know is correct okay so if uh, if this all of this uh, condition satisfied we want to set the number so the current number to be zero we want to set the has wrong value to be equal to false because it's going to be zero so there's not going to be value at all we want to set the square color set square color to be equal to color white okay so we want to clear out all of the colors which might be on the square and then we want to set all of the nodes to be clear down basically all of the nodes so set node set not number value to be equal to zero and then uh, let's uh, call another function display text so we want to just display the text okay so make sure you provide this implementation and i think that's it let's save everything and go back to unity okay so let's go back to our game scene and uh, just select the rubber button and then let's find the script which we just created so it's gonna be the rubber rubber button script and drag and drop it onto this the game component let's quickly test it if it's working so let's go to the scene main menu let's save everything okay let's press play easy 
and then let's input some uh, number, let's say 5 and 7. Okay, we select the number 5 and we click this rubber, everything disappears, and we can select and enter another number, but it's game over. Let's uh, go again. So let's click 6. We want to select the 6 and then clear it, and we can enter a different number now. We can clear it. Let's see if this is work for the notes as well. So if we enable the notes, put few notes in, and then press rubber, everything just disappear. Okay? So there is no notes, and we can still input more. Okay, so seems like the rubber button is working fine. Let's add one more button to our game. So let's go to the game scene and we want to add the back button. So let's quickly do that. Let's uh, go to our canvas. Let's right click UI and then button. Let's call this button back. Okay, I will move this button below the pause button. And then let's apply the texture. So don't go to our game screen. Find this uh, back button texture, which is the small back button. Drag and drop it into the source image. And then set the size based on the texture. So 162 by 162. 162 by 162. Okay, and I will move the... I will just first of all remove the text. So go to here and then select this text and press delete. Okay, and then let's move it down. We want to basically set the same Y position as rest of the button. So I will just select the pause button and then get this Y position, copy it, and then back button and then paste it here. So it's on the same height and then I will just manipulate the X position to be maybe here. Okay, I think that looks good. You can position however you like if you don't like this positioning. Uh, I think I will just move a bit this note button to the, to the right. Okay, so let's select the back button and then we need to add uh, on-click events. So in the on-click event, I will just click this small plus and then I will just grab the main camera, put into the object and from the function, we want to select the functions, main buttons and then we want to call the load scene. And we want to say uh, we want to go when we go back. We want to go back to the main menu. So let's select the scene and put the name of the scene. So the main menu, main menu. Okay. And then let's click. Let's click this plus again. And then let's drag and drop the main camera again. So I will place it here. And then from the functions, let's select the menu buttons and then set pause and make sure this uh, this checkbox is unchecked. OK, so that's it. And let's go back to the main menu now, save everything and let's press play. OK, so now when we go to our game, we can place some number. Let's place again. Let's place some notes. Okay, and let's go back to our game and let's start again. And as you see, everything is cleared out. Nodes are disabled and uh, there is nothing, nothing uh, like the game is starting from the beginning. Let's start and try again. And this timer is restarted as well. Okay, so I think everything is working as we, as we expect. Let's try again this rubber. So I just want to clear up this, clear up this. I want to just get some notes, clear out this, clear out this. I think the notes uh, numbers are very, very similar to the original numbers. So sometimes if you place, place let's say, number five only on the notes, you have illusion that this is the number which is already in the square. So I will think I will just set different color for these numbers. So let's quickly do that. So let's go to our prefabs and then I will select the grid square 
let's open this brief up and then let's go switch back to the scene view so i will select this all of the text by holding selecting the first one holding shift and select the last one and i will change the color for this text from this gray to maybe whatever you like for the for the notes really maybe i will set this like more red okay and then let's let's set, let's uh, press this small icon here and then save so now we should have different different color for our notes so if you select the square enable note mode you see i will have a red red color for the notes i think that looks good you can set different color whatever you like really and then you can place the notes you can clear down the number and you can do whatever you like here okay so i think that's it for this episode in the next episode we will start to implementing the saving logic so we'll be able to save our game and then uh, we will have the another continue button here so we'll be able to just continue the saved game because uh, like sudoku game is quite long so if the player started playing the game and don't have a time to really complete it he can just save it and return to it like a later so i think that would be a good future to implement so thank you very much for watching if you like this episode please consider subscribing and uh, leave the like if you want to get the source code straight away this game is available on my website so you can go there and check it out this project uh, thank you very much for watching and see you again in the next episode.